You're tuned in to another episode of the Talk About It podcast. I'm Lauren Fulmer. I'm Victor Dantas. And uh, we have another amazing special guest with us today, Stacy Brown. Stacy, how are you? I'm very good, thank you. How good. are you guys? Good, good, good. good. No complaints, life's good. You I know. wouldn't exactly say amazing special <laughs> guest, but... It's going good enough. Oh, yeah. Sure. Right? Sure. Okay, right. <laughs> um, beggars can't be choosers. Exactly. Um, let's just start off with you. Give us a, a little bit of introduction. Tell us about yourself. Okay. So, my name is Stacy Brown. Um, I'm originally from Alexis, which is like 15 minutes north of Monmouth. Big town. Bit huge. huge. Used to be a lot bigger, but now it's, well, and it's not even a town. It's just a village. Okay. So, it's small. But um, grew up there, went to high school there when there was still a high school there. Um, and then I went to college, went to Monmouth, and then did my master's degree at Bradley. I moved down to Florida for about 13 years, and now I've been back to Illinois for about 10 years. Um, and I work in behavioral health, so mental health and substance use services. I've done that for a very long time. If I tell you how long, then you'll be able to like guess how old I am. So I won't tell you. Yeah, we we won't dig into that. <laughs> what did you go to school for? Oh well, when I started school, I went into communications because I was going to be a radio DJ. And then, <laughs> okay, <laughs> did you see his yeah, face? Okay. <laughs> and then I um, did a complete turn and went into psychology. Okay. <laughs> And you did your master in psychology? In counseling, yes. Okay. So I was a, a mental health therapist for a while. And then I've been in administration of behavioral health programs for quite some time. Okay. What, what do you believe chain, made that, that change? <laughs> How, I mean, that's, what influenced you? That's pretty significant. Yeah. Well, when I started college, I went to Millican in Decatur. And that's where I majored in communications. And I got so homesick in the first semester like I was such a baby and I had to come home and so I moved back I started at Monmouth and then I'm like okay I'm just gonna change everything and I just completely changed it all I'd had like one psychology course in high school and I loved it mm -hmm. so that's what I decided I'd do yeah that's cool I got I've been it. stuck in it ever since I can't get out <laughs> yeah um <coughs> excuse me I love the uh study of human behavior I, I got I love mine in sociology I've been a <clears throat> people watcher. <laughs> I mean, I like I love to go to Las Vegas. That's the best. I mean, I could sit on a bench and just watch. Oh yes, the the entertainment. You know, I, I enjoy that a lot. But I'm yeah. very amazed by people and yeah. just like. <clears throat> you know what they do like so you you and i are on snapchat together so i'm j like just forewarn people that if you're ever in an airport with me and you are you know it's like five in the morning and you literally just got up like i'm secretly snapchatting you yeah. and sending pictures mm -hmm. i probably shouldn't admit that but yeah well, it's bad we won't tell anyone <laughs> <laughs> Your secret's safe here. Exactly. But no, I, I love that. Um, you know, if you can't laugh uh, at yourself or laugh at everybody, I mean, I, oh, there's yeah. a lot of entertainment out here, and I have no problem being, <laughs> uh, being a part of it. Uh, I try to play my role. You Which know? is true, yes. Yeah. I see a lot of your funny stuff. Yeah, I try. Um, <laughs> but yeah. funny. So the sociology part of it, though. Um, so, you know, one minute you're like, I'm going to be a DJ. <laughs> And then you're like, I'm, I'm going to, like, you know, get into uh, behavioral health yeah. and st watching people. And, and I'm sure throughout that, did you guys have to do like study, um, you know, where you like go out and like observation? And, and... Oh, I wish. But no, we oh, didn't. We that would have been really good. Yeah, we had to do that. Did uh, you? I went to Arizona State. That's where I got my degree from. And, uh, yeah, we had these, like, case that you'd have to go out and, like, just whether it's go to dinner, coffee like, shop. Like, did people know you were observing? No, oh, no. Nice. no. That was the cool part. So you were basically, like, an educational stalker. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I did it to get my degree. Mm -hmm. I mean, I had to follow you guys. <laughs> but, no, I mean, it just was different stuff. Like, see how people uh, handle themselves or, or behave yes, in different Yes, very interesting. I, I like all that stuff. Well, know. that is kind of more of a sociology. Mine was more geared towards counseling and therapy and, mm -hmm. and that. Type what type of, of people, what type of cases do you give the more <clears throat> counseling? Uh, why people look for you? like the most well I think it just so I don't do therapy anymore okay because I'm a terrible therapist 
<laughs> I. <laughs> Okay. I am. I'm a terrible listener. Isn't that sad oh, to say? Now that is a key part. It right? is, and you have to be a really good listener. And I just suck at it. I would rather just like converse with somebody. Mm-hmm. And when you're a therapist, you're really supposed to be listening to that person. And so I decided I need to stop mm-hmm. doing that. And so I like supervise and train other therapists. Oh. I tell them what how not to be like me. Right. Basically. Okay. Okay. But I mean, I think it's, it's so different. Everybody is so different. And so people seek counseling for such different reasons and what they need is different and what they're going through is different. I mean, if, if you're working as a counselor or a therapist, especially in community mental health, every single client you have is completely different. Okay. And so it really just depends on them. Do you think everybody should do therapy regardless if they are if they think they have a problem or mental issues or right. anything like that. Therapy is absolutely not just for people who have a diagnosis. Yes. Right. Yeah. And just because you go to therapy doesn't automatically mean you have a diagnosis. Mm-hmm. It's nice to bounce something off somebody else who really doesn't know you, doesn't know anything about you. Um, so yeah, you know, if I had to say it, I would recommend it for anybody. I mean, you don't have to have these like deep seated trauma issues Mm -hmm. just to go in and talk to somebody about what's going on with you or help you with a little bit of direction that you need. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I've, I've been uh, a time or two in my life, um, going through divorce, um, feeling like kind of stagnant in life, you know? Um, and I, I wasn't, you know, I wasn't all bummed out or depressed. No issue. I just, like you said, it's great to be able to sit down, just get things off your chest or even just, you know, everything runs through our head all the time, but to be able to like get it out and then hear it and then also talk with somebody right. who, like you said, this isn't a friend or a family member or anyone. They are just there to listen. Right. And uh, a lot of times, at least for me through that, I was kind of, I would slowly see myself figuring it out, kind of not necessarily on my own, right. but like... Like, oh, I just, I just said that, and that, <laughs> that makes total sense, Yes, you know? Yeah. So you're, like, having these aha moments just by being mm-hmm. able to get it out. And I think sometimes it's just, it's really a guide. It's, it's a person who's kind of guiding you. And sometimes you say things or you think things, and then not until you're with somebody who doesn't know it, and then you say it like you just put out there, oh, wow, that's what I just said. Mm-hmm. Or maybe that's what I was thinking but didn't realize it. Right. Mm-hmm. And so it's nice to just kind of have that neutral party who doesn't know you. Mm-hmm. So. And like uh, uh, depression nowadays is a big thing. It right? is. It um, really is. Like when, when a person that has depression, when they look for a therapist or a psychologist, what would be the, the, the steps that the psychologist or therapist takes to help that person? Well, and again, it's very different because okay. somebody may um, come into counseling who has who has general sadness, is what I'll call it. You know that it doesn't necessarily move to the point of being major depressive disorder. And so, you know, we when we look to diagnosis, we have there are very specific tr- criteria that we have to look for. Mm-hmm. Have you been eating? Have you been sleeping? You know, what's your energy level? What's your relationships like? And so, again, it is so different for every single person. Mm-hmm. And you just have to really, you have to do that first assessment and really kind of dig in and find out what's going on. Ask a lot of questions. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That's the only time you really get to talk a lot. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Uh, When you talked about that earlier, too, um, something I used to be really bad at, um, it was the whole listening part where (laughs) a lot of people, they don't listen. They wait to talk. Right. 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 And there that, is a big difference. Yeah, yeah. And when that was pointed out to me, I'm like, that's that's exactly what I do. I I like wait to, you know, when someone's talking to you and you're like, oh, I got an idea. I can add, yes. I can add to this. And mm-hmm. you're like watching their lips for it to stop moving. <laughs> Not paying attention. So, yeah, saying. you have no idea what they're saying. And then you're ready to be like, okay, but check this out. Yeah. <laughs> like you thought that's good. You should hear this. And uh, we end up just trying to like one up all the time. Yes. And so when that was pointed out, to me that uh, a friend of mine was he actually was calling himself out for this and then when i heard it worded that way like not you're not listening you're waiting to talk right i, I was like oh my gosh that's exactly what i've been doing almost so my then whole do life. you feel like now instead of waiting to talk do you feel like you have to concentrate really hard when people are talking to you 
I don't. If what I find myself doing, once I, I identified that I was doing that, I almost just like squash it. Like uh -huh. whatever you had to say, if it's important, it's going to come back up. Right. Um, mm -hmm. But just squash. Keep giving. Because yeah, you're going to miss a really good story. Possibly, or, or yes. maybe even a good point right. that, that you can, like if I wouldn't uh, have been listening and I was waiting to talk when he pointed out, listen, you know, and wait to talk, like I would have missed that. Right? <laughs> and so, you'd still just be waiting to talk. <laughs> right, right. So yeah. I don't know. I just find that, that interesting. That's a good uh, way to put it. Because so many of us, we want to be able to like contribute or, or like share this, uh, you know, uh, well, you had that happen. Well, check what happened right. to me. Mm -hmm. and well, and people hate silence. Right. And that's really important in counseling. You know, it's okay to be silent. Mm -hmm. And just because you've told me something doesn't mean I automatically have to come back and say, well, what do you think about this? Or have you thought about this? Mm -hmm. You know, it's okay to just sit on it. And that's, it's a really hard skill mm -hmm. to master is being silent, well, especially yeah. for me. Right. And <laughs> like me when, too. <laughs> when people are meeting another person, like when, uh, when you meet a new person, like a lot of people just think you need to talk about yourself for the person to know you. But in reality, the, pe the person will know you by the questions you ask them. So you don't need to talk much. Right. If you ask the right questions and let the other person talk, the other person will get to know you well mm -hmm. and know what you know, you yeah. know, and know yourself That's better. That's very true. Mm -hmm. I found myself, this is just random. Uh, I golfed <laughs> with someone over the summer. I'd never met the guy before uh, and, and was put in the cart with him. And you know me, I mean, we do this, I work to the radio, uh, I'm asking questions, just engaging. Right. And so we have this like four and a half hour round of golf. Um, and I'm like asking, not one time um, was there a, so what about you? <laughs> you know, like, so where do you work? Um, right. What is your family? Where do you live? There was mm -hmm. nothing. And I'm like, should I shut up and leave this guy? <laughs> like, because that's a, to me that's a sign like you're not really right. trying to engage in this. But when I would ask a question, he's you know all in, wanting to talk about himself. He had mm -hmm. a great time, but it did. It just dawned on me like, um, what's going on here? Is well, he maybe not maybe he never gets to talk about himself. Yeah. I that mean, maybe he doesn't get to. Yeah, so he's like, I'm not going to ask him another question. <laughs> I want more on me. No, but I don't know what it was, but I just found that after the round of golf, I was, I was doing like some reflecting. I'm like, oh, I don't think he even got my name, <laughs> you know, like. <laughs> I know everything about this man and he has right. no clue who I am. Right, but oh, whatever, Lord. you know, well, um, it just, it, I had fun. I had a great that's time. That's all that matters. I that's all that matters. I hope he did too, you know. He must yeah. have because he would have shut down. He would have stopped talking. Right. Yeah. If he didn't or really just said, hey, to... shut up already. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe because it's you. He might have done that. You never know. So what are the plans for the future, for the near future? What do you want to be doing in five years? What do I want to be when I grow up? Yeah. Oh, I'm still trying to figure that out. A radio yeah. DJ. Yeah. You should go back. I so, know. So yeah, about the radio DJ, how did the, like, why did you think about doing that before oh. psychology? Gosh, that was so long ago. Did you work for a radio station no. or something? Or no. And what does a radio DJ do? So just play the music and that's it <laughs> on the radio. No, I never got that far. She never got that far. I never found out. Well, I think it was like so. I love music in general. Mm -hmm. I just love music, and I like to talk. And so it was like, oh, I can do both of those, you know. Mm -hmm. And then I had my cool radio voice, but yeah. um, I don't Let's know. Hear it. No, that was it, pretty uh, much. I got my cool radio no, voice. No, that was my cool radio <laughs> voice. I don't know, I'm a little hoarse today. I wasn't fully prepared for you today. Ju you jumped on the one hour show with me. I know, I know. Well, yeah, I've come in and yeah. and I've done um, our 90s what was the drive, at, yeah, our 90s the drive at home. And, and then I was doing some, um, I was doing Wednesday mornings in Galesburg with Eric Hansen. So I'd go in every Wednesday morning and be on the radio with him. You did, and play music. And talk. Okay. okay yeah. <laughs> right. But um, I don't know. I don't know what it is. Like I said, you know, I'm. I when I walked in here today, I'm like, oh, you're videotaping this. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, no, I have a face for radio. <laughs> I have thought about that. Um, we've had a couple guests who are like, wait, this is on video. Like, so <laughs> um, that's should, not what a podcast. <laughs> I should start sharing that. Yeah. So, yeah. It's yes. audio and video. Well, and the funny thing was, is even when you sent that, and I was like, oh my god, I love this. You were saying we're gonna be on YouTube, and yet yeah, here I mean, I'm like, okay. I, I showed you. 
I know. It was my own ignorance. See, you weren't listening. You were I just know. Waiting. You were just waiting to talk. I was just excited. <laughs> just so, kidding. I don't know. I Because I like music, because I like to talk, it was just, it seemed like, you know, that was going to be the path. Okay. So. Okay. Well, let's, let's uh, kick rocks on um, <laughs> the alcohol, um, drugs, uh, and even mental health. Um, the reward of being able to help some people like get on the path in the direction that they're wanting to right. be. Uh, it is. It's rewarding. I mean, when you help somebody or somebody gets into recovery or, you know, they've turned their life around or they're doing really well. And to know that you maybe have had a small part in that, it is really rewarding. And it, I mean, this, nobody goes into behavioral health to be rich. It's just mm-hmm. not happening. Right. And so they go into it because they want to help people. And so yeah. it really does make a difference. Yeah, that's uh, a huge, huge reward and part of that job. I've always thought uh, in a perfect world, right, if I could just go get my dream job, it literally would be um, like a sober living facility. Really? Yeah, I've always been interested in this. Um, and it, I, I watch a whole lot of intervention. Oh, like, <laughs> I mean... <laughs> To the point. Why do you do that? Oh, God. Hey, do you even know what the show is? <laughs> no. Okay. Well, that's why. <laughs> so anyways, uh, Victor, Intervention is a TV show. It's a, a documentary where they, they basically get someone who has a drug or alcohol problem. Okay. And they say, hey, we're doing a, a documentary on people with, uh, with addiction problems. Do you mind if we follow you for a couple weeks and just see how you live your life? And they're, the people, I'm sure they get offered money or something. And they have how, to get something, yeah. But they, the backdoor part, part is that the family and friends of this person with addiction problems has really coordinated this in okay. hopes of providing an intervention at the end. Okay. And um, the person... Do will, they know? Do they know that going into it? Um, the individual? No, no, no. Okay. They do not know the intervention is coming gotcha. at the end. That's where a lot of them, and that's the show. Well, Victor, obviously I don't watch interventions. <laughs> but as the show has grown, you know, there's these addicts have, like they're aware of it. And okay. then so they're like, I swear if, if I walk in this room and my family's in here, if this is intervention, I'm gone. Yeah. I, I'm not sitting down and having this talk. So... Um, it's like old time candid camera type of thing. Yeah, but I mean, it's this is real people, real yeah. feelings, and yeah. they're like, hey, they they all have like little letters, like Stacy, um, your behavior has affected me in the following mm-hmm. ways, and they share with you, mm-hmm. and then the uncle goes, and the mom, the... and the sister, and then the person decides right now, are you going to leave and go get help, or are you going to choose? The life that you've been living and if you do choose the life you've been living all of us can no longer be a part of your um that is stressing me out yeah thinking about it i mean it's a great show and big pressure i know and the long story short how much i genuinely love and have this passion and care for this world Mm -hmm. um i people who know me who have watched uh, i i literally will cry at the end of some uh, episodes of intervention and i don't know these people I have no skin in the game. But when you see someone like they got clean, you saw what they were going through. Right. And they finally get clean and they look healthier. They have the smile. Their eyes are like glowing, you know. And so they, do and they, they usually get clean at the end? Yeah. It's not. And I, that's when I've cried at some where you see they had it. And then after like 30, 40 days, they have a relapse. And you're like, no, man, I think no. that's why it stresses me out hearing you explain it. Because especially with substance use, getting into recovery is so difficult. And it's, it takes people sometimes two, three, four, 20 times right. for it really to, you know, sink in and work and understand why they're doing it. And so it kind of stresses me out that they're, they put people on the spot right there because everybody will say, sure, I'm ready. I don't want to live this life anymore. Mm-hmm. You know, I've said it a hundred times. Nobody wakes up one day and says, well, I want to be addicted to drugs. Mm-hmm. That's right. what I want to do with the rest of my right. life. It doesn't work like that. And it really is a brain disease. And so, you know, it, it makes me a little bit sad in that, you know, if they say, okay, yeah, I really want to get help. They go and they're not successful that time around. What then are these family members doing? Mm-hmm. You know, are they saying, well, you couldn't cut it. So we're cutting you off. Right. Or, you know, you said you were going to do it and you didn't. You didn't make it. So we're not here to support you. And that's when people really need support. So right. bad. Right. 
And there is, is there a lot of medicine that those people need to take, like on a treatment or like, what would be the first thing? The guy is literally like seeking for help. Like not everybody has medicated assisted no? treatment for okay. substance use. It depends on what substances they use, how long they've been using, but there is medicated assist. Like for opioids, you can use Suboxone to decrease that dependence on the okay. opioid. But, um, you know, it, it doesn't necessarily work for everybody, you know, and, and not everybody is successful at it. Mm -hmm. Um, we just, just getting people, um, accepting and into treatment is the first step. Mm -hmm. And if they can even start acknowledging that they have an issue and that they want to work on it, um, you know, medication isn't always necessary. Sometimes just talking through it, you know, and there's such different, um, ideas now because the, and I'm going to call, call it the old school idea, you know, the Alcoholics Anonymous um, idea was based on complete abstinence. Mm -hmm. You have to completely stop the drug or alcohol that you're using. Well, now there's a strong push for harm reduction as opposed to complete abstinence. So that's, are you at least decreasing your usage significantly? Mm -hmm. Or are you um, looking for a place that will distribute clean needles and allow people to um, shoot up in a safe environment? Because studies have shown that that type of harm reduction will actually decrease usage over time. Yeah, And so there are two ideas and thoughts about it now and so it just really kind of depends on what your thought process is or where you come from or what your idea about it is hmm. so there's a lot of different options out there for people one thing that i've like from intervention and, and friends and family and all that stuff um i think too at some point when you have battled addiction long enough or hard enough whatever that individual's experience is now you start to run into like self-esteem and like belief and like, okay, I keep telling myself I'm not going to do this anymore. And mm -hmm. here I am. Right. Clearly I'm an idiot. I can't freaking do it. Right. You know, and then you start to kick yourself instead of like believing right. and, and trying to like, I, I, um, Leanne Corson, mm -hmm. um, I was speaking with her one time, but it's like the reality is every single person who walks on this earth does have something that they look at themselves and go, I, I don't, you know, I don't like it or I, or don't. I wish I was better at, sure. or, I mean, like, not even that far, but I wish I could do something better or yeah. some mm -hmm. people fake it better than most. Some yes. people walk around and you think, man, that guy, he's got, got it his all stuff together. together. Boy, <laughs> does he figure it out. And I guarantee you that guy or gal still lays their head down at night and mm -hmm. goes like, damn, man, I wish I wouldn't have did this today. I agree. I don't, I mean, nobody is a hundred percent perfect. It just, and if you say that you are, or you think that, you know, not that I don't want people to have great self-esteem, sure. but you know, there's something going on with everybody. Oh, yeah. There absolutely is. Whether or not it's small or huge, it just depends. But I agree with you. I think there's always something. And especially with um, addiction and substance use, I think people do really beat themselves up because they haven't been successful in stopping and right. everybody wants me to be clean and you know they want all these things for me and I just can't do it it is hard mm -hmm. it's very hard absolutely do you, do you think social media makes it make things worse because I mean we you know like on Instagram people it looks like people have per perfect lives oh yeah <laughs> well and that's always been amazing to me I have mm -hmm. to tell you um, and I, I, this is one of the people things that I want to understand. I really want to understand why people portray themselves in these perfect lives. Mm -hmm. And not that I'm saying I want people to be like, oh my God, this was the worst day of my life. Mm -hmm. And tomorrow, oh my God, this is what happened. I mean, but it's amazing to me how open people either are one way or the other. So it's either my life is terrible, everything is bad, blah, 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 oh, poor me, as opposed to look at this wonderful, perfect life I have. Mm -hmm. You know, and I come from a really small town. We know what's going on. <laughs> we know. And so when people do, we're all just like, mm. and that's, I, I don't understand that. I mean, and not that you have to put your you know, dirty laundry out on front street. But you know, what is it that makes people feel like they have to portray this mm -hmm. wonderful, perfect life? So, well, one thing that comes to my mind is you ask that, um, there's a Netflix documentary called social dilemma. Uh, highly recommend everyone watches it. 
Um, but they talk about, and it's a lot of the guys and gals who were behind the algorithms of like Facebook and um, Instagram and mm-hmm. all this stuff where they start to see uh, this person likes this type of stuff, feed them right. more. Um, very strategically, this was put in, even that sound of a notification, oh, someone just liked yeah. my photo, right? There's like a gratification, oh, someone just complimented me. Right. Someone just compliment. oh, someone likes my photo. Right. Dopamine. Someone thinks I, yeah, and it creates that. So then, yeah. it, it, then it, just like anything, it becomes addicting. Yeah. You know, you, you want that. So if I post tomorrow, you know, if this. Yeah, uh, if there's uh, something good and I put out something. Yeah. And I didn't even answer your question. I apologize. Right. I do. I think that social media is a huge driving force between mm-hmm. or, um, or about a lot of things that happen. I mean, we talk about it so much. Like, things were so different when I grew up. I mean, none of this existed. Mm-hmm. We were laughing yesterday about how when I was in college and I had to go down to the computer lab. And yeah. I've talked to kids, they're like, what is that? I'm like, well, we didn't have our own computers. We had to go down to the actual computer lab to mm-hmm. be on a computer and print stuff. And they're like, wow. <laughs> but with social media, I mean, everything is out there. Yeah. Even if you don't want it out there, it's mm-hmm. out there. Oh, yeah. And so, you know, I'm glad I grew up in a time where it didn't exist. And we all mm-hmm. laugh. We're like, God, all the terrible things I did. <laughs> yeah. I'm glad nobody caught that on film. But <laughs> right. it is. And yeah. I think it makes things harder because... Anybody at any time can put anything about you out there and you really don't have any control over it. Yes. Yeah. Well, you said it best when we first started this episode, sitting at the airport. You know, <laughs> and you I'm see, terrible. You oh my see, God. I just do what I do. But no, but you know what I mean? Like that yes. is. And uh, I have two young kids uh-huh. who are very much like every other kid want, want one of these phones or when they have it, they Your want Your kids are hysterical. They're just staring at it, right? And it's like, <laughs> dude. Put that thing down. Um, but then I also have to remind myself, there is a time and place. Mm-hmm. This is a different generation. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, so I have to remind myself, too, you know, like, hey, you know, when you were a kid, like, there was stuff like video games or things that were starting to come about mm-hmm. that my parents were like, you know, get outside and yes. mow. You yes. Yes. But. <laughs> and mow, is that what you Yeah. Said? Oh, we mowed every other day. <laughs> Whether it needed it or not. <laughs> my parents will watch this. Yeah. And, and I do other. appreciate you calling me out on my bad social media skills. <laughs> well, I was more complimenting. Uh, I wasn't calling you out. Oh, okay. Um, I mean, I do the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> and social media became way like popular like this because, of course, there's not only negative aspects on mm-hmm. social media either. Like for me, for example, I'm from Brazil. Social media is the best way for me to connect with my family in well, Brazil. Well, yes. And for them to know what's happening here, for me to know how my parents are doing, for my family is doing. So uh, the problem is nobody wants to post any negative thing right. about you on social media. So right. at, the end of, at the end of the day, I uh, my family only knows about the good things right. that happen to right. me, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So do you tell them the not so good things when you call them? Yeah, yeah, I do. I do. Okay. With my mother. Yes, I do. <laughs> yeah. the because rest she's of, worried about you, you know. <laughs> the rest of people that follows me, they just know the good things. Yeah. <laughs> they but only know the good it's things. It's like there, there's a great, great um, purpose, I think, when the stuff was was eventually like, or getting put into place right. and getting designed. I think there, but then like anything, once you get man and money, mm-hmm. uh, I shouldn't say man, humankind, right? <laughs> and money involved, right. all of a sudden dynamics start to, to shift right. pretty quickly. Mm-hmm. It's uh, scary. It's, I mean, and it's so funny because people are like, well, this one thing was put on social media and now my life is so different. Like just yeah. one thing can swing it yeah. so easily. Well, and that's what... Um, I mean, you talk about suicide rates and things like that, especially in youth. Something like that, when you're in seventh grade, freshman, something like that, uh, you chose to share a nude uh, photo with somebody, and then it's going around the whole school. And at that age, my life is over. I mean, And I'm going to tell you, (laughs) Lauren, I am 51. I cannot imagine sending anybody. A new photo yeah. of myself, even when I was younger, but it's not, yeah. you know, it's, it's very common. Oh, it's common. It's very and especially common. in these young kids where they don't, you don't realize that this is here forever. Yes. Yeah. And right. you think, oh no, I'll just delete it. No, well, it's, no. it's there forever. Some yeah. way, somehow, somehow. It becomes a fossil somehow, yeah. somewhere right. in the. Right. 
bigger. And with the metaverse is getting worse because now with 360 cameras, you can just put your glass and you're gonna. Do I don't even know yeah. what the metaverse <laughs> is, but it, I'm scared to it's death. A whole <laughs> o- it's a whole other world. Yeah, I mean, it's metaverse a- is basically like so. If there is a normal camera, like our cameras, mm-hmm. you just catch what's in front of the camera. Metaverse is a 360 camera. I mean, you need a 360 camera, and then if another person has the glass, yes. and it just look, it looks like you're in the same room as that person. I so can't you can even... hang out with these people I'm from so all over now. the world. Yeah. Yes. And now you can actually, like, if I understand correctly, you can even, this is where I start to get headaches and stuff, <laughs> but you can even, like, buy land yeah. or, like, yeah. real estate marketing stuff. Like, you can make money. Mm-hmm. There is money being made. I don't know how, or I'd probably be doing it. <laughs> but like you would in this fake world yeah yeah it would be scary when people only wants to be on metaverse yeah. and not being real life you, that's what's going to happen people are going to eventually stop this socialization <laughs> yeah. um and, and like i said okay some people who maybe don't um thrive mm-hmm. in social situations is great for them right right um but gosh i I personally just have like a concern for our future as a whole in the standpoint of we are in, in the core of every human. There is a you're supposed to like depend on someone else. That's what a community, a, a town, right. you know, mm-hmm. we, we're all you're not supposed to be great at everything. You know, you be good at a couple. He is. I am. And together we can right. get stuff done. And, well, and we don't live on islands by ourselves. Yes. Yeah. Although it I, is it is scary. It's yeah. very scary because like we even notice it at work. So people's work ethic has completely changed. I'm like, I mean, we will set up interviews for positions we have, but people won't show. Yeah. I mean, just, I mean, I tell them all the time, call and lie to me. Say you broke your leg or, mm-hmm. you know, I don't care. If right. you're not going to come, just let me know. But they will just literally not show. And I'm like... I can't imagine having done that, you know, at a younger age and not had that. Um, I don't want to use the word respect because I think that's a, a tough word. I, I mean, it's just common decency, I think, kind of. Mm-hmm. But yeah, things are so different now. Not so common. Do you think decency. because of right. the pandemic and home office, it, it made it worse? Yes, it <laughs> absolutely did. I mean, nobody wants to go to work anymore. Mm-hmm. And, you know, at some point, is everybody's job going to be from their home? And how, do, how does that work? And how, mm-hmm. do, how do people live like that? I just, yeah. I don't know. I don't think I could do it. Although, the older I've gotten, the more I have been more of a homebody, you know? Mm-hmm. And I think that's just my age. I'm just like, oh, I don't want to deal with stupid people. <laughs> but <laughs> um, Or I just don't want to deal with stupidity in general. Mm-hmm. But... I, I like going in to work every day. You know, it's, it's, it works. It's, I'm around other people, you know, it gives me that socialization or I know that I'm doing blah, blah, blah. But Mm -hmm. yeah, for the amount of people who have no desire to go to work anymore, I just, I don't I mean, I don't want to work. I want to be independently wealthy, but Mm -hmm. if I'm going to work, I need to be around other people or I want to be around other people and not just through a video screen. Personal interaction is still the most important thing. Right? It is. For, I mean, I think there's probably to a level of extent everyone's different. Mm-hmm. But for me, I can, you know, uh, if I'm home for two, three days and I haven't gotten out, I haven't talked or seen, even just go, hey, yeah. to somebody. Oh, that would probably drive you crazy. It does. Yes, because that's the kind feel, of person you are. Right. And I can feel like I'm running on empty, mm-hmm. right? I can get out and be able to, and it fills up really quickly. Of just right. being able to like high five somebody. Hey, right. what's up? How have you been? Oh, that's great. Like I enjoy that. I genuinely need it to like keep myself going. I, mm-hmm. I love people. And I get the whole introvert thing. I mean, I really do. But I think at some point, you know, we've got to have interactions with other people. Mm-hmm. And and it's kind of scary that things are moving to such a virtual world and mm-hmm. away from others. Right. So, yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm an introvert person. Um, but when I talk to or when I talk about subjects that I like to talk about, I will talk. Right. But I hate small talks, you know, mm-hmm. uh, if I need to meet someone, I need to know what I'm going to say in the questions I will ask. I don't like the, hi, how are you? Good, how are you? Good. <laughs> how's, how, how's everything? Yeah, <laughs> you know? I hate you. that. Yeah. Yes. So yeah, I need to know what I'm going to talk, what the person will talk, what the person likes, so I know what to ask. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, I just don't want to meet the person. You know? yeah. I don't do, like, like, do you hi, feel? Do you feel... <laughs> 
Do you feel some of that um, possibly came from uh, were you moving here knowing no English? So the small talk. How long have you been in the United States? Um, it's yesterday. been almost seven years. <laughs> we, just got, we just got here yesterday. <laughs> Uh, I got here in 2015. Okay. Yeah. So when not I came very here. long. Yeah. I mean, seven years. But, and yeah. you knew no English? No. Wow. Uh, yeah, I needed to learn English in six months to go to school. <laughs> Where'd you go to school? I went to Carl Sandburg in Western Illinois. I got my bachelor's from Western. So, yeah. In six months, I needed to learn English, pass the English test to be a college level. Went to that college. is amazing to yeah. me. Yeah. <laughs> that is amazing. Yeah, it was crazy. It was a lot of pressure because if I didn't learn English, I would need to go back to Brazil and yeah. just go to school there. I mean, it would, would be fine, but I, I wanted to go to school here. And I'm still here. Seven do you years like later. living here? Yes, mm -hmm. I do. Yeah, in the beginning, it was different because the small town, I never lived in small towns before. Mm -hmm. um, and then, but now I'm used to. Yeah, I feel like I'm at home. You know, wow. one thing I. Um, I've never shared this with you, but one thing I have a great deal of respect. Is this going to be a moment? This is a moment. <laughs> okay. If I cry at the end, uh, Okay, all right. But no, I do have yeah. a great deal of respect Open your for heart. this guy. Because you think... Um, <laughs> oh my God, yes. You sink or you swim, right? Yes. And he came here um, with a, I'm not going to sink. I'm going to figure this out. And he's done an absolutely tremendous job uh, in so many areas of his life, just professionally, personally. I, 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 I give you a great deal of respect because it... Uh, it wasn't. None of it was just handed to. Oh me. no! Mm -hmm. This was a very nice moment. Oh yeah. How definitely. old are you? Can I ask? I'm 27. Only 27. You're just a baby. Right. Am but I? At, at 27, I mean, you know, there's there's a lot of people that have, I mean, 40, 50, yes. 60 that haven't taken that that swing. Yeah. You know? mm -hmm. Like I, for me, I, I moved out to Arizona, uh, not knowing anybody really, mm -hmm. um, and that was my sink or swim. You know, yep. and, and it gave a great deal of confidence, too, because you're like, if I can, I can do this, here, I can do this. Right. Yeah. And I to this day, I, I truly believe you can push me out of a, a helicopter anywhere. I am going to figure it out. Yeah. I'm going to land on my feet. I'm Remember going to that. make stuff happen. Said, you yeah, push definitely. Out of I agree 100 yeah. percent. I think a lot of people just want to be a victim, you know. Sometimes, um, um, or just want things given to them, yes. you know, and I love it. Like I get very jazzed when people are like, I'm just going to go to blah, 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 you know, or I'm going to, and I'm just like, oh, that's so exciting, you know, or change their entire life direction. Mm -hmm. I'm just, it, it's amazing to me and I love it. Mm -hmm. I'm astounded at the amount of people I know who will never leave their comfort zone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like there's like, for example, prejudice, racism, for example. You know, um, a lot of people say, oh, because I'm black, people don't like me. I won't have jobs. I won't have opportunities. No, it's literally the opposite. That's when you really need to go like study, meet people, get knowledge, apply your knowledge, do what you need to do, work hard. Otherwise, you're just going to be a victim and right. be at home and be like, everybody hates me. And, I love you know? your perspective on so that. Like, well, I think just everyone wants the reward, but they mm -hmm. don't want the work. Yeah. I mean, and I get it. Right. I don't want to do uh, all this, uh, <laughs> right. this hard work, you mm -hmm. know. I just want uh, that money to automatically come right. into my bank account and not have to do anything. And look, that happens to a very small percent, you right. know, the yes. lottery, right. family. What I mean, there's yeah. a small, small percent that get mm -hmm. that. Oh, yeah. But everyone else, you, and you better get out here and get it for yourself because yeah. no one else is going to just give this. And most people that win the lottery, they lose the money because most. they don't know how to deal right. with that. It goes you know? back to the, if um, one of my favorites is, I always say this. It's one of my favorites. <laughs> but this, this is one of my favorites. But if you can't handle the 20000 a year that right. we're giving you, I say we, whether it's your power to be, you know, mm -hmm. whatever you believe. But if you can't manage this, what on earth makes you think you can manage more? Mm -hmm. And we all sit here and we're like, man, I want more. Myself included. I want more money. I want more house. I want more cars. Right. Mm -hmm. But like, but if you can't handle what you currently have mm -hmm. and you're, you're unorganized, right. you're barely, you're flying by the seat of your pants, mm -hmm. what in the world makes you think we can get, put more on that plate <laughs> and then you're going to be like, now I got it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's For a good sure. way to look at it. But don't worry because I already know 
what I'm going to do with my lottery winning. It's all planned out. So sure. don't worry about me. I'm good. Sure. Yeah. What, what no, would I don't you do? Tell what would you do? I'm not telling anybody because if I do win the lottery, I don't want anybody to uh, know. Right. I'll be that person who like comes in a ski mask to pick up my check, you know? Mm -hmm. No, I'm a, I am um, would love to uh, hit the lottery and be like this uh, behind the scenes, like generous, mm -hmm. game changing money. Yes. That's what I want. Yeah. I would love to, to be at a, a restaurant and write one of those $1,000 tips. Yeah. $10,000. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you have 482 okay, fine. million. $10,000. I mean, but like, yeah, 10,000, man. Mm -hmm. That's like giving a dollar to someone right, right. now in the comparison right. of money. You know, yeah. I could give you a dollar all day, no problem. <laughs> right? Yeah. But like, to know like 10,000 and you can make this person's life significantly like, different. Oh my yeah. God. I, mm -hmm. Someone just blessed me with 10 grand out of nowhere. Right. And, and then like ride off as a mystery Santa, you know, <laughs> like that's what I think would be so incredibly oh, cool. Yeah, for sure. Is for that sure. an official um, tax write off? Can you do that? Uh, mystery Santa? Yes. I don't know. I don't, <laughs> I don't think the government uh, would, would buy that, but I don't know. Maybe. Well, if well, you have donation that much money, is maybe. a tax write off. Yes. Right? Yeah. yeah. So I guess theoretically. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I just okay. want to make sure I want to put that into my plan. I should look into that before <laughs> yes. I go writing checks. So. Right. <laughs> I don't ever play the lotto. I do the when it gets like big, big. Yeah. And you know, we're like, oh my gosh. When you really like, have no chance to win, right. that's when you play. That's when they yeah, get my two bucks. But yeah, I, I was I was surprised because uh, those numbers that I'm saying is from Brazil. Nine over ninety percent of people that wins the lottery, they lose the money. Mm -hmm. So like we we come to the conclusion that like wealth is not having money. Wealth is knowledge, and then. For example, if a millionaire gives a million dollars to a very poor person, they will spend the money not knowing what to do. Right. They'll buy a house for a father, for the for the brothers, for himself, a car, it's gone. And then he, they cannot even keep all of that after right. that. So like the more knowledge, like if a billionaire lose all the money they have, they will be able to make it again because they know that meeting people, getting knowledge from people, apply the knowledge and do what they need to do is going to make them the same type of money again. But I think that happens in the United States too. Yes. I mean, yes. I don't think oh, it's oh, yeah, for sure. Brazil, yes. but oh, yeah. 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 But yeah, there's... Uh, I think there's even a TV show about. I was gonna talk I was gonna, on HGTV. <laughs> what is it like? How it's like had these people who win the lottery, and this specific guy goes out and he helps them find their dream home. And so they'll be like, "Oh, I won a million dollars," and then the home that they buy is like nine hundred ninety nine thousand dollar home. I and thought you were like, gonna oh, say two million. You have <laughs> one. I just put one million down. You have one thousand dollars left now to put towards your property tax, which is yes. ten thousand dollars yeah, a, mo a month. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. So exactly. yeah. So yeah, giving knowledge to people is way more powerful than giving money. Yeah. You know, we need to teach people how to do stuff instead of giving money, in my opinion. You know? Yeah. But as you know, like no one wants to sit down and, and just get some advice. And like, learn. No. Right? Like, yeah. I, that's like, the think main of difference. our parents, right? Like, I know my parents would sit down and talk to me and I'm just like, when is this going to be? <laughs> you know, like I don't, you're, I know they're giving, they're unloading knowledge. And most yes. people are like that. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> but as a kid, I, I didn't care about knowledge. No. I didn't, look, my friends are out here riding bikes, exactly. you know, so it's crazy. <laughs> and we have people that still are going through that right now. Yes. You know? yeah. Don't care. I agree. Sure. You going to give me a check or not? <laughs> <laughs> For not coming to work. <laughs> right. Oh man. Yeah. So what what else? Uh, let's go any direction you want. You got questions for me or Victor? Or <laughs> you got anything? Um, oh my God, we could sit here for hours. Um, Why well, you think? The what, that's okay. Why you think? What is uh, a vacation or a destination? Something you've done that it has been your your best. Um, experience, experience. Or, or you know you, you really enjoyed it's funny you bring that up because we were just talking about that um with somebody not too long ago this weekend i don't remember what it was um we went to ireland and we did the whole southern part um i mean we rented cars we didn't like do formalized tours or anything like we kind of drove ourselves around we spent one night in a castle we you know did all the things but um it's probably the best trip I've ever been. I mean, it's so beautiful there. Ireland? Yes. Okay. And Big, so we, grassy, green. Yeah. 
right? It's, it's so pretty. So we do want to go back. I mean, we only got to see the bottom part. We want to go back and do the northern part. But oh my God, if anybody has a chance, it's it's a great trip. So when I was going to Arizona State, um, I always wanted to study abroad. And I was looking into this last, you know, like kind of my last semester uh, <laughs> in Ireland was when I, I came home with the brochure. I'm like all about it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do this. And my girlfriend at the time, I'm like, check this out. Like, this is what I'm going to do. Like, this is great. And she's like, uh, I mean, if you do that, I'm not going to just be sitting here waiting <laughs> when, you know, when you get back. So you didn't And it go. was like, I did not go. Um, and it was like something I really do wish I would have just went ahead and did. I mean, especially at that age. Did you marry that, that girl? I did. Okay. I did end up marrying and divorcing her. <laughs> um, but see, you brought it up. Um, but that's oh, no. a whole other. Yeah, <laughs> that's a whole other story. I'm um, so sorry. No, no, sorry. It don't matter. It's um, okay. Yeah, life's good. Um, I had never went to Ireland, and it's not a big you deal. You still can. It's, it's not a big deal. <laughs> I feel like there's been a lot of opportunities for you to cry yeah, during yeah. this talk. No, but for real, Ireland, <laughs> I, I do want to get back, like, uh, that opportunity yes. back and go check it out. It's beautiful. It, it looks like it. I would all, like to go there. All I get is Google images, you know, <laughs> but it looks so nice. But I mean, we, my husband and I, you know, go places in the United States, and I think that's a lot of people miss out on. Oh, you yeah. don't have to travel across an ocean. You don't have to, you know, spend thousands and thousands of dollars. There are so many places in the United mm -hmm. States that are great agree so agree. great yeah I've, sure. I've shared that because i've never left the country i just got a passport ah. in uh february where are you going telling, where's your first trip i think brazil with this guy Shut um, up. is what i would really like to put together yep yep yeah you're going big that's yeah. good well and i brazil like baby to, <laughs> and it'd be nice you to have, have a six local. months to learn a different language. <laughs> Better oh, get no. on this. Hey, I'll like, ask him. No, because he's no, Portuguese is hard. He's yeah. going to be like talking about you, and you don't even know it. <laughs> no, he already does. <laughs> <I'm sure. laughs> oh man, no, Portuguese That's is so awesome. hard to, to learn. Yeah, is but, it? Yes, I would say so. It's one of the hardest languages because there's a lot of grammar var variations. So. Mm -hmm. Um, it takes a little bit. You need to be immersed in the language in order to learn. You mm -hmm. need to go to Brazil right. and stay there. All right. For good. For good. Yeah. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> he's yeah. totally, he's kicking you out of the country. He's going to take you and leave you there. Yeah. It would be the only way I would probably commit to learning it is if I know, okay, well, this is where I'm going to be. That's awesome. Yeah. I hope you do go. Yeah. yeah. A yeah. lot of Americans go to Brazil. Do every they? Every year. Yeah. There's a lot of American tourism in Brazil. They love it. Yeah. Carnival. What about you? You've traveled quite a bit internationally. Yes. Too. What is the yeah. best place you've ever been to? Um, best place. I and you say. can't say Monmouth. No. <laughs> I would say uh, Athens. Greece. Athens. Yeah. Oh, I'm so jealous. Yeah. Yeah. I love Nebraska. <laughs> <laughs> it's similar. <laughs> Georgia. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I lived in Athens for one year, and um, it was a great place. Um, I used to say that Athens is the most beautiful place I've been, but after I went to Brazil this like this last uh, Christmas uh, break, uh, I do think Rio is the most beautiful place on earth. Rio in Brazil, mm -hmm. it's different type of beauties. You know, uh, Rio is completely all natural beauty. You see all those mountains, the the ocean, uh, the Christ, mm -hmm. everything. You know, mm -hmm. so like. Like, I was literally, I was like, man, Rio is the nicest place that I've been, you In know. Rio. But Athens is different yes. because of the traditional thing, all those white houses, yeah. blue ocean in the back. Athens, like Greece, is basically an island. So you can see the ocean around the whole city, like, the, mm -hmm. in, the, in the back. That's so it's cool. very nice. You can go up to the Acropolis. Acropolis is, like, one of the seven mm -hmm. wonders of the world. And it's the highest place in Athens, so you see the entire thing. It's very nice. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. I love it. I love it. But the Christ in Rio is nice, too. It's mm -hmm. the highest place in Rio, and you can see the whole town, the yeah. whole city as well. But, yeah. But besides that, I've, I've, I've lived in Lisbon, Portugal, as well. I only lived in Lisbon in Athens, but I've been to Switzerland, Spain, Italy. Uh, yeah. Those you gotta get you gotta get some stamps on your passport. I know. I, I mean, know. he's definitely way past you. Well, it's not a race. He's twenty seven. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? I'm forty one. Lauren, 
41. Let's get moving here. Yeah, yeah, but I bet uh, he's probably never been to Missouri. Never been to Missouri. See? Yeah. I do want to travel more in the U.S., though. <laughs> I've been to Colorado. I've You're not been missing to much. My uh, in Missouri. I love Colorado. Yeah, I love Beautiful. Colorado. Too. I yeah. I will put it out there. I'm not a fan of Miami. No. No, not my. Yeah. It's not my scene. Not the my food. thing. The food. I love the food yes. when I was in Miami. That the a little too fast paced and crazy uh, for me. But yeah, the food. That's what I like. I like the well, yeah, fast. You're yeah, something. he's young. Old, he likes man. that. Yeah. We're like we're worried about getting our seatbelt on. And, <laughs> yeah, you know. I'm I'm on the other side of the state in yeah. Clearwater, where it's the most populated geriatric area right. in the state. Yeah. They're that's doing my... knee replacements. Yeah, yeah. laughing. I, I lived there for 13 years. I feel yeah. like that's more my speed. Right. Yeah. yeah. But no, I mean, it I was, love Miami. It was beautiful. I would go again, mm -hmm. but yeah. Oh, I, mean, I wouldn't go again. The food. <laughs> I, the food I really loved. Uh, what's it? Cuban. There's a lot of See, South American, Central America traditions. There is, here, and yeah. I am not a fan of Cuban. I don't. I'm not a big pork fan, and yeah. so like when I first moved down to Florida and I was getting like one of the very first Cuban sandwiches, I'm like, can can you leave the pork off of that? And I thought the guy was gonna punch me in the face. Yeah. <laughs> He's yeah. like, do you even have any clue of what you're eating? Right. I'm like, no. <laughs> So Cuban sandwich is something traditional from Cuba? Yeah. Like it's a pork sandwich? Yes. And um, it's pressed. I mean, and I think they put mustard and all this other stuff mm. on it. And I'm just like not big into the ham or the pork. Okay. So I'm like, eh. Never tried yeah. that. I, yeah. I, I, oh, they wanted to it. kick me out of the restaurant. You I would love it. Yeah. It's good. Yeah. I like pork. Yeah. <laughs> I like all of it. I like I'm like the least picky eater. Well, actually, you're probably the same. <laughs> Um, but I don't care what it is. I will eat it, especially yeah. um, like fear factor stuff. If I see, <laughs> if I see anyone else here eating it and you're fine, you're, I, so you're gonna eat like a cockroach. I, would, no, I mean, I'll eat whatever. <laughs> you want to hit the remote for the talk about? It? <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I'll eat whatever. I don't. I'm not picky. I don't care. Yeah. Um, we grew up. You had to finish your plate. Liver anyways. and onions. I've had it. Yeah. See, so yeah, that's I had it when I was younger, and I'm like, yeah. <laughs> what do you think is the most American traditional food? Oops. Well, I think it depends on where you are in the United States. But I, Why? As a whole, I'm gonna go burger, pizza. What about in Mama? In Mama. <laughs> I don't know. That's hard. Yeah. I don't know. But I, mean, I think when you think American food, especially even throughout the world, I would I would assume the general answer is gonna be like some pizza, uh, burger, or hot dog. Okay. Yeah, fried, fried chicken, chicken for sure. That's probably an Amer more American than anything, right? But okay. the funny thing about it is, all the things you listed, and I'm not very familiar with the history of the hamburger, mm -hmm. but you know, pizza is an Italy thing. Yeah. You know, yeah. Um, hot dogs, like. Sure, the Vienna sausage. Yes, I'm like, I would so say the traditional American food is what we eat on Thanksgiving, like. Oh, stuffing, like turkey and stuffing uh, and all that. Fried chicken, mashed potatoes. No, isn't yeah. it? I mean, it's all American food. Yeah, green bean <laughs> casserole. I'm sure other yeah, countries. Yeah, stuff aren't like that. Yeah. I only had that in the United States. I never but had. You're not gonna like get into a whole bunch of history questions, are you? Because <laughs> we're gonna have to stop. Right here. Yeah. No, I think though. I mean, any of that. Um, that would, that would be fair. Mm -hmm. I think so. Because yeah. they talk about pizza, uh, uh, burger, because of fast foods, right? Mm -hmm. uh, Do you are... like like the traditional Thanksgiving dinner? I like it, yes. First of all, we had, we had a question with uh, a previous guest. <laughs> it's your last meal. Like, you're putting in the electric <laughs> chair. You're getting put in the electric chair. You know what this guy says? Strawberry uh, cheesecake, cheesecake blizzard from Dairy Queen. <laughs> yes! <laughs> It's the best thing, though. No, I love you're, it. You're, that would be your last meal? <laughs> right. You're about at, to least, at least the dessert, yeah. Oh, I want a big chunk of meatloaf, some mashed potatoes, uh, you know, in, in, some sort of vegetable. I want a meal, not a wow. cheesecake blizzard. Right I would before. have that and the blizzard after. Well, you didn't say that. Yeah, but... Yeah. You, you went... I remember I left here going, a blizzard? <laughs> yeah, yeah. This guy is about to die, and he wants, he wants have a you, blizzard. Have you tried the That's blizzard awesome. from Dairy Queen? No, I don't so, eat ice cream. Yeah, like, yeah. I eat ice cream, like, maybe twice a year. Maybe. So Are you, you even really, American? Probably not. You don't really uh, know what I'm talking about, then. No, you need to try it. I just know it's not going to be the last thing I eat before I die. <laughs> I wow. Sure. That's a hard question, though. I, I don't know what to say to that one. Yeah. Oh, and I did say I had to have Cheez-Its, too. Like, oh, yeah. Cheez -Its. <laughs> he Cheez said he keeps yeah. Cheez-Its in his car. I, I believe that because my were... husband is a big Cheez-Its fan, and I buy them all the time, but I hate them. I buy three to four boxes each time I go to the store. <laughs> uh, one's gone on the way home. Oh, uh, my gosh. But I don't play with Cheez-Its at all. You talk about <laughs> addiction. We were talking about addiction earlier. <laughs> 
Um, and just the original Cheez Its. I hate when uh, someone gets like the big toasted ones or, or white the flavored ones. No. Yeah. Wow. Original. I didn't realize you were so strong about the cheese. Uh, yeah, I, need um, some therapy. I, I thought you were going <laughs> to bring me a box. Well, I, had I known that this was your deal, I would have. Like, I'd have put a bow on it, too. <laughs> a bow. I, I would have come walking in with a box of cheeses and a strawberry <laughs> cheesecake blizzard from Dairy Queen. Oh, and we, oh, we yeah. two would have fell I'll over be dead. be happy. I know. We just would have fell over dead and been happy, right? <laughs> Oh, man. And then hoping I get to go to Brazil with you guys. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Do they have yeah. Cheez-Its in Brazil? Um, I think so, or something similar to it. Uh, it'll yeah. be called like... No, he'll be like, this yeah, is not a real cheese It'll be like, oh, flavor crackers. <laughs> che- flavor crackers. Cheesy flavored <laughs> squares. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, oh, man. I don't remember seeing that. Well, no, we'll have to do that though, Brazil. Uh, oh yeah, for sure. For sure. You have a passport now. I do. So you need a visa now. It's for time. Too. Oh, you, so I have to get the extra. Before, yeah, before it, it didn't require, but now you need a visa. Yeah. Learn something new every day. Yeah, but it's easy. You're there, yeah. man. Yeah, oh, just yeah. apply for it. No, I would love to do it. I really would. Yeah. It's twenty five thousand dollars of visa. <laughs> I'm kidding. Yeah. <laughs> go ahead and give your check to him. He'll get it for you. Right. Well, you guys better win that lotto. First, huh? Well, man, I had fun today. Um, so did I. Greatly appreciate you coming in, Stacy, and uh, being a part of this Talk About It podcast. I'm very excited. Thank you very did much, Did you Stacey. mention before you, you have a... Have you started one or you're I, in the works? I have. Yeah. We've only had two episodes. You're more than welcome to yes. plug What's it the right name? Here, if you um, like. Ramblings from a small town. It's um, just basically, I have people on from where I'm from, and we talk about what it's like to have grown up in a small town and what are the pros and the cons. And then we totally get off subject all the time and talk about stupid stuff we did when we were kids. Mm-hmm. Um, it's kind of hard because I want it to be a really open forum, and it's definitely not kid friendly. But, <laughs> you know, I think you, sometimes I think, okay, if I do this, then I'm going to offend somebody, and I need to kind of get past that. But no, yeah. we've, Don't worry we've about done that. two episodes, and the people People have been really fun and it's it's gotten some good feedback and okay. good well even uh you know we've talked about this too i mean good feedback bad feedback we we do want feedback period mm-hmm. except about this episode yeah. this is it, it was just, spectacular well, you can pick victor and i apart but just leave <laughs> stacy alone um but other than that yeah we we totally uh welcome uh any feedback um good or bad i mean For sure. if, if you can, don't worry i will Give back, and I will plug your podcast on my next episode. Okay. Oh, nice. <laughs> All right. Well, yeah. well, we appreciate you coming in and taking time out of your schedule. We had a whole lot of fun. Well, thanks for having me. Thank you, Stacy. Sure. It's Stacy Brown. I'm Lauren Fulmer. I'm Victor Dantas. And it's the Talk About It podcast, another successful episode. <laughs> Thank you for watching this episode of the Talk About It podcast. I'm Victor Dantas. I'm Lauren Fulmer. And uh, we would encourage you guys to subscribe to the channel. Um, and don't forget to hit the bell. Uh, it's going to be right below the video. so you Hit guys... the bell. <laughs> so you know when the next episode is up. All we right? appreciate all the support. Thank you.